today's unpredictable landscape, we face many challenges, difficult decisions, and changing circumstances. We are bound to face many roadblocks on our way in achieving our goals. Hello Philippines, hola Peru. I'm Randy Max Bulakit, your host tonight, here at Tusapang Scholar or Scholar Talks with the theme, sharing the best practices in resilient leadership and academic excellence in the new normal live every Tuesday and Thursday from 7 to 8 in the evening here at the Scholar TV. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Doc Randy. Good evening to all our listeners here and abroad, of course, in Peru also. no. And good uh, good evening to all our uh, listeners from the Philippines and to all scholars here in the Philippines. Good evening also to all our listeners and subscribers around the world. We are very fortunate to have our guests tonight who are the epitome of success in both academic and leadership. All right, uh, Sir Mark, let allow me to introduce our speaker tonight. Our guest is very enthusiastic and passionate university professor. She's committed to her students' learning. Uh, she graduated from uh, San Marcos University with a degree doctor in education, master in educational administration, and she is enrolled with her second master's degree in didactics, didactics in foreign languages. She has an international certifications in various uh, in FCE, PET English, DLF, A2, and B1 in French, creator and administrator of the Facebook page, Ms. Clau Rivera. And she is also in charge of disseminating the teaching of the English language with the future educators, teaching professionals, and the general public. She is currently working as a professor at the Faculty of Administration in San Marcos University, which is a very recognized university in Peru. She has been teaching for more than 10 years in different levels. She has been working with different universities, such as the UTP in Federico Villarreal, San Marcos University, San Agustin, and San Cesar Vallejo University. Ladies and gents, let us welcome Professor Claudia Rivera Rojas. Good evening, Thank you Professor. so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for this nice presentation. Thank you, dear Mark. Thank you, Dr. Randy Max, for this nice presentation. I'm really glad to be here with you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Hello, good welcome. evening. Good evening and good morning in Peru. Yes, <laughs> here is 9 a.m. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be with you to talk about different topics. Thank you so much. Yeah, Professor Claudia, congratulations for a wonderful talk last uh, week though, in NYCL. So congratulations and thank you at the same time. Thank you so much, dear Mark. It was a pleasure to know a lot of people who were really enthusiastic. A lot of students were really enthusiastic. They participated. They asked a lot. That was really a very nice moment for me. I really like it. Thank you so much to Randy Max too for the invitation. It was a pleasure to be there. And because of your involvement, Madam, our event was very successful. That is why we have set this time as a very special for you so that we can be able to know better and at the same time we have to learn more okay we have to learn from you more particularly in overcoming adversities and maintaining excellence in academic performance all right sir mark shall we begin yeah. with uh, asking questions to our guests yes <laughs> so to a uh, professor uh claudia so um, maybe some questions will be asked to you to inspire our listeners, our uh, students, our young professionals for you, uh, based on your experience. So maybe we can start with how many years of your habit or how many years have you been practicing your profession? And uh, in this uh, practicing the profession, when you had a conflict at work and how you handled it? 
Okay, thank you so much. That's a really nice question. Very, very interesting to answer it. Well, I have I have uh, almost 10 years teaching English, okay? I have been working in different levels with young children, with adolescents, with young adults. Nowadays, I'm working with young adults, right? Because now I work at different universities. Well, yes, I have to handle with different kind of things, okay? Because uh, there are some students who have some problems to learn a second language, right? And sometimes it's a little bit difficult to try to motivate them, to encourage them, to try to learn a different language because they feel frustrated. Because some teachers mention that maybe you are not going to do this, you are bad, so they don't know how to correct. And that's the reason why some students are frustrated, they don't want to continue studying English, or maybe when you are teaching them, they don't want to participate because they feel sh uh, that they are going to be, they are going to fail. So for me, uh, I need to learn different techniques to motivate them. Okay, I try to learn different techniques. I try to always train in different uh, places in order to uh, help them. Okay, to learn the language in a very uh, in a very good environment because I sometimes consider that it's very good to motivate them to say some words that are going to push them to participate. Don't uh, I don't like to mention words that are gonna hurt their feelings. I don't really like that. But there are some teachers who used to do that. And I don't, I don't really like, I prefer to be polite because even though they are young adults, okay, but they have feelings too. So I'm considering that uh, it's a very big problem. Well, here in Peru, it's a problem because some students from different universities don't want to talk a little bit in another language because they feel shy. They feel frustrated. So for me, that was something that I need to handle. And with the experience, I think that I could do it. Okay. Um, how about professor, since there are a lot or there is what we call diversity in Peru, and you have mentioned that students in Peru are very shy in terms of speaking with different uh, learners. Now, as a professor, how do you cultivate positive relationships with your students and create a sense of community? Meaning to say, how do you instill the sense of belongingness uh, to your students? Yes, I always try to thank you. That was a very uh, nice question too. Uh, yes, of course, my dear Dr. Randy Max. For me, it was... Um, I always try to create different activities in order to engage them, to involve them of the activities. For example, with the students that I uh, working with them because they are learning English uh, for a specific purpose, English for business, I always try to use role plays. In that way, they are going to be involved on the activity. So they are going to try to, to put in different situations because uh, in that area, they are going to face it many situations, conflict management, business meetings. So they don't know how to, how to be there, how to act, which words, which useful phrases they are going to use, right? So I think that when we involve them in different activities, when we try to engage them, uh, it's going to be very meaningful for them. Even though they are going to fail, maybe, in the process, but that is a process. So I think that it's good to involve them in different activities. Here in, in Peru, something that was very successful for me was to use vivential activities, right? For example, if I have to talk about, I don't know, um, if we want to talk about different holidays, when we have a face-to-face -face lessons, okay, okay, I try to motivate them to try to show them in English to explain, but they use different material, okay, realia, they trust to do different things. In that way, they feel that they are belonging to this group. And another thing that I consider that is uh, maybe something that is for my personality, I'm not sure. I really like to, to talk to them, to, to ask them about different things in order to, to try to help them, okay, to show their abilities, okay? Because you have abilities, you could do it, uh, don't feel like that. So I think that maybe it's about my personality. I really like to make them nice words in order to motivate them the, to increase participation. Because 
I think that in that way it's gonna be uh, the environment is gonna be good and they are going to have a good atmosphere to participate and they are not going to be frustrated if they commit a mistake because we are a group so it's going to happen right Wow, uh, the, your teaching philosophy, uh, Professor Claudia, is very recommendable you know, to all teachers who don't have any patience to their uh, students. But, of course, we, you have a great uh, philosophy of teaching uh, doc but, or professor. But what do you think is the greatest challenge in facing the students today, right now? Uh, we are now in the computer or technology world. Okay, now in remote lessons, my dear Mark, I think, right? In remote lessons, right? yes. In remote, here in Peru, we have some problems with the technology because some, is, uh, well, connectivity is something that many times is going to be a problem because maybe you are doing an activity and then immediately, suddenly, it's going to just disappear, right? Because you don't have the connectivity. But I think that we try to face it, okay? Uh, I try to support them with material, with additional material. In that way, they could print it and maybe check or maybe take notes and try to work with that. Because uh, sometimes the synchronous lessons are a little bit difficult here. Even though I work for private and public universities, but we have a main difference. Of course, we have a main difference because in some public universities, we have students who has problems with the internet. Maybe in private universities, yes, they could afford that a little bit more. But be, besides that, I'm considering that it's always good to provide them with, uh, with a very, uh, with extra mat material. Okay, I think that it's going to be better. In that way, they are going to check, they are going to try to take notes. Uh, and But uh, it's a lot of effort for teachers, I know, because you need to prepare more than you are going to receive, right? Maybe sometimes. But uh, I think that is part of the profession. As I said, uh, in my case, I decided to study uh, to be a teacher because my father is a teacher. So I really like that profession because when I was a children, I look my father trying to do different things, preparing material. He's an elementary school teacher. So maybe that's the reason why I have a lot of patience. Maybe that's a reason. But yes, I really like, I really like my, my profession. So maybe that's the reason why I always try to push me to do more. Okay. But yes, as I said, for it's a problem nowadays because I think that we have to, to prepare more okay more material than in the past right because you need to prepare for asynchronous lessons from synchronous lessons to try to engage them because sometimes when you are at the computer they could be five or six minutes to paying attention but then they are going to suddenly be bored right you need to try to engage them to use different gamifications so you need to plan more time how you are going to create your lessons right in order to engage them don't lose them in on the activities right on the different activities so i think that is more higher but i think that is not difficult we could do it i think that we have the power so we could do it wow that's amazing professor rojas no? uh, you have, you have really used various techniques and a lot of materials in order for your lesson to be uh, more interesting to your students uh, just, uh, I'm just asking because here in the Philippines, we have also difficulty with uh, the utilization of materials, particularly integrating it in, uh, in a technology-based materials. Um, is it in Peru, uh, the government will provide all of those materials, like for example, your computer, your gadgets, your laptops that are being used by students and professors? You know, I'm just wondering if we have similar because in the Philippines, private schools provide it. However, some of uh, our schools, particularly in public schools or in the state universities, are, those materials are not provided. How about in Peru, madam? Well, here in Peru, all the students, it doesn't matter if you are in a private or in a public university, you are going to afford your materials. That's something that sometimes for public universities, for students from public universities, it's a little bit difficult. For example, I studied 
my career at a public university. And of course, we have many, many things maybe that we have to face it, okay? But I think that the most important uh, is how the students is going to try to be creative in order to face the different problems. Because yes, as I mentioned, you are going to hear, you are going to afford your material, you are going to afford your books, you are going to afford your laptop, even though the teachers, we pay for our con uh, internet, for the internet connection. So that is not something that, that the government is going to provide us. Okay, even though I think that it's very good that in, uh, in your country you have that possibility, I think that it's a very good, uh, very good option, right? But here it's not like that. But something that I want to mention that I consider that is important is that the majority of students and teachers try to do the best effort to try to get all the tools in order to to learn in a better way, right? They try to maybe, yes, I know it's very difficult. I study in a national university and sometimes we have many problems, right? Many problems. But I think that the students who really want to learn, they try to do all the things they try to to save maybe some money, to work in different places in order to afford it, right? And I think that some teachers too, they try to sacrifice many things in order to provide their students more tools, more things. So I think that in this pandemic time, in this COVID-19 time, here in our country, the teachers and the students try to do the best with the things that we have, okay? I think that they try to do the best. Oh, take note, students or listeners, even in Peru, they have problem with connectivity. It doesn't mean that they are in Peru. They have the strongest connectivity in the world. So even in the Philippines, we have that problem. So uh, in Peru, still, they have the same problem. So please take note of that, students. So we, we are not alone. And of course, in terms of material in the Philippines, if we have problem with that, uh, like uh, we don't have laptops, we don't have uh, money to buy the materials. Still, uh, Professor Claudia is very clear that they have the same problem in Peru. So please take note of that, that the problem during this pandemic is not only in the Philippines, but it is worldwide. That's why uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Claudia um, is here to explain also to us that education is not only for the advanced country, we are the the preparation is not only here in the Philippines or in Peru, but throughout, maybe in the whole world. So, uh, Prop uh, Claudia, maybe I would like to follow up some uh, questions. Uh, are the leveraged resources in the community to enhance your teaching capacity in your place? Well, here we have a lot of trainings, right, uh, for national schools, okay, for elementary or for high school. Uh, the government provide them for in different trainings. Besides that, as Dr. Randy Max mentioned, I have my Facebook page, and I always try to contribute with different teachers who wants to learn. Uh, we have different programs for teachers who want to pay them and receive a personalized training and for teachers who maybe want to participate in webinars okay that are free so they the most uh, thing that they are asking us to to participate in the workshops are the technological workshops they uh, they want to learn more things to use gamification to engage the students in the thing so i we have many teachers from different levels who try to participate in our workshops, but they try to focus on the case of digital technology, okay, digital tools to teach English, how they could use them in a very meaningful way, because sometimes we, we know about that tools, but we don't know how to use it. So that's the reason why we have many uh, teachers who, of, uh, say, uh, who are really glad to have in my group because they participate, they always follow us, so I think that here in Peru, the, uh, they try to, in this time, they are trying to, to learn more about these tools, not in public, not, in, not just in public, not just in national uh, schools or high schools or maybe in universities. In general, I think that they are trying to improve that in order to increase 
students' participation because sometimes here in Peru, according to the technology, it is really difficult to have, in, at least in public schools and public universities and in public high schools, okay, it's very uh, difficult to engage students right to involve them so we need more participation in synchronous lessons so that was the reason why they tried to push them to motivate them to give it to them a plus okay you are going to of course you are going to afford you are going to pay your internet but you are going to receive something extra so that's why right so i think that here the majority of teachers try to learn about different tools and that's something positive because in that way they are trying to use a gamification okay they are trying to use different techniques in order to help them and personally speaking just to add something i try to to use in this case the communicative approach because as i said some of my students uh, well in the past i consider that some of the students from different levels from basic from intermediates don't want to participate because they feel nervous so even though i provide them an activity from writing for listening i always try to ask them something to make it more meaningful to give it to them the time to participate so that's why even though i know we are in this pandemic time and we're going to have problems but we could use different sources right to record maybe your voice to participate so I think that we are very creative as a teachers. Thank you, Prof. Um, I just I just want to give you a background of our fourfold functions of the university here in the Philippines. So our university or the Philippines is requiring all universities to perform the fourfold functions, which is teaching, research, extension, and production. Now, I'd like to ask if you have also the same uh, fourfold functions in your in your country, and at the same time, how do you motivate your fellow teachers to perform research while having your workloads in the university? Yes, thank you so much. Yes, here is very similar. It's very similar, uh, Dr. Randy and uh, Mr. Marx. It's very similar here. We are focusing on research, okay? Uh, the students try to to work on that from different, um, well, in different subjects, okay? In different areas. I think that something that is maybe a problem is the process because sometimes when they are working on a research, they are going to feel uh, that they are not going to, maybe they are going to change that topic because they are going to say, I don't have enough information. So I think that they, the most important thing about that to motivate them, to encourage them, is to provide them or maybe to give them some topics that are going to be attractive for them. So in that way, they are going to be uh, motivate them to look for because as you know a research is going to take some time right it's not something that you are going to prepare from one day to another so we need to be very sincere about that for example in my case when i prepare my doctoral thesis i try to look for a topic that make me feel passionate in that way i have a lot i take a lot of time like one year i think one year to prepare in that because I was looking for different information, I was searching on the web. So I think that the most important to encourage them is to look for topics that make them to engage, topics that are attractive, even though they are related to the subject. Okay, maybe I am an English teacher, I'm going to look for different strategies, different techniques, but there is always something that you prefer, right? Maybe you prefer prefer to work on listening, maybe you prefer to work on speaking and you want to know more about that. Maybe systematics investigations, systematic researches, or maybe you are going to work on quantitative or qualitative research, so we don't know. But you need to, to really like what you are going to do because as I always mention to my students, you are going to take time with on that you are not going to prepare with one day two days because you need to very uh, to very sincere with the information because it's going to be part of another investigation maybe another research or maybe it's going to be part of a um, new theory or something so you need to be uh, very honest with the things that you are going to research 
right? So that's why. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Claudia, for the information that you have given to us regarding research and to all who are writing their dissertation. Uh, that's right. <laughs> you need to prepare a lot. Of, uh, one of my professors said that you need to become a detective. You know, you need to research first. You know first the topic that you are uh, in line with or your best interest before doing the writing because you will just waste your time if you don't have the topic because I also experienced that one. So that's why I thank you very much, Prof. Claudia, for that uh, information or guide so that our pro young professionals and also those, those who are listening right now who are in their writing uh, dissertation or thesis also learn uh, from your advice. So... Um, Maybe all those uh, information about teaching strategies and about those uh, advice for uh, about uh, education. Can you can you describe also how you typically approach the challenges that you face in life before you become professional, and how did you confront all the failures, and what did you learn from it? Okay, thank you. Something that I mentioned that day to the leaderships, okay, was that they don't need to be feel frustrated when they are going to to fail maybe in the process because I think that something that is really important is the experience, right? Because as I said, when I started working, I was really uh, worried about each step of the lesson. I was, uh, I have a lot of, I take a lot of time, like, four or five hours preparing my lessons but then with the experience because i always consider that the experience provide us of different tools because you are going to make a diagnostic of your students immediately because now you know how are they how they are going to act so i think that uh, for me experience was something that helped me because it's given to me confidence too as i mentioned to my uh, to the leaderships that day, okay, to the leaders that day, something that I mentioned then too is to feel confidence, okay, to get confidence because you are you are the teacher or maybe you are uh, working there or you are the leader of a team of the leader of, a, of maybe an organization. So I always consider that it's good that you are going to feel, uh, to get confidence to do what you want, okay? Maybe you want to do an activity, but you are going to be nervous. The activity is going to be successful because you don't have the attitude. You need to have the attitude. Even though you maybe you are nervous, of course, that's normal, but you need to have the attitude to do the activities, especially if you are going to be a teacher because the teacher is the role model of the students. So you need to show them that you know what you do. Otherwise, the students are going to mention, my teacher doesn't know what he or she is going to do, so why I am here, right? Or maybe the team, if you are working in an organization and you don't have uh, the attitude, they are going to mention, mm, what happened here, right? Is he, the, is he the leader or is she the leader? So I think that something that helped me was first the experience. Another thing, to learn from different groups, because as I said, I work with different levels and I work in different universities. Of course, I have many, many situations, many problems related, not with the students, hopefully, but yes, with some bosses, okay, who are, who always try to, to push you to work extra hours or maybe something like that. But I think that if we work, if we communicate in an assertive way, they are going to realize that they are uh, doing something that maybe is not properly, right? But I, as I mentioned, okay, again, I'm going to say what we have the, the big, uh, the International Congress, okay? According to what I say, I think that the assertive communication is another way to face many problems. I know that maybe we're going to have people who is going to jail you, maybe who are going to have a bad behavior, who are going to be furious, but first we need to wait to 
to relax, to chill out. And then we need to talk to them. I know that maybe you are going to say, but it's not fair for me. Okay. I know it's not fair maybe for us, but I think that we need to, to try to show them that we are more, that we could face with that, that we could work in a assertive way. So we just take a little bit time and then we have to talk to them to show them that they are wrong. Okay, but in a very uh, uh, simple way, okay, but very clear, very clear. You need to be clear about what you feel, okay, that's assertive, okay. And I think that the other person is going to really understand what you are trying to say, okay. Yeah. But remember, don't hurt feelings, okay. But I think that that's something that helped me. Experience, communicative, okay, the assertive communication. Another thing that helped as I said, was uh, the different strategies that are learned by my own, because as I always said, maybe you are going to learn about an approach, but in one group, it is going to be successful, but maybe in another group, no. So you need to look for many techniques and all, and besides that, you need to be creative. As a teacher, you need to be creative. You need to create, to move, to improve different things, because as I always said, not all the groups are the same. Not all the students are the same. Not all the people are the same. So we need to try to, to focus on the different personalities that we are going to handle it. And not just with the students, with our co-workers too, with our uh, bosses too, okay? Because sometimes they have a personality that maybe is a little bit difficult to handle it, but we need to consider to make a diagnostic to try to talk with them in an assertive way, okay? So that's why. Okay, so Mark, uh, I think we have limited uh, we have limited time, though we are very interested uh, to have long conversation with uh, our guest, Professor Claudia Noemi Rivera Rojas, but because of the time, so Sir Mark, Okay, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Claudia, for that very informative um, discussion. Uh, I learned from what you have discussed, the experience is very important, the confidence is very important, the attitude is very important, learning for different groups is very important also, and last but not least, assertive, assertive rather, communication is very important. So that is our takeaway for this evening with our professor Claudia Noemi Rivera Rojas. Doc Randy? Yeah, before we uh, we will ask Professor Claudia to leave our room, may I uh, may I or may we hear from her words of encouragement or at least uh, one insight yeah? or one message to her to her students in, in Peru or in uh, also to all uh, listeners to all listeners or or to all viewers okay thank you so much something that i really believe is when i mentioned that you have the power to do what you want okay if you want to do many things because in my case for example as i said i want to be an english teacher and i just follow my dream and now I think that I am trying to do this, to try to, to help different teachers to feel what I feel, right? To love their career, their profession. So something that I always mention is if you want, you could do it, okay? The sky is not the, the, the limit, okay? The sky is not the limit because we have many, many things, okay? Try to enjoy it, okay? Enjoy what you are going to do. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor... Yeah. Thank you, Professor Claudia Noemi Ro uh, Rivera Rojas. We enjoyed a lot uh, talking with you with this uh, very short time. Thank you so much. Yes, Dr. Randy, to all listeners and to all who want to com uh, contact uh, our Professor Claudia, uh, just uh, search the Miss Clau Rivera at the Facebook page and uh, please see the comment, okay? Uh, we will post the comment or we will post the Facebook page of Professor Claudia. And Dr. Randy? Thank you, Professor Claudia.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was a nice interview. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Thank you. God bless you. Gracias a Dios. <laughs> to all our viewers, we'll be right back. And this time, well, as what they say, saving the best for last. So, without further ado, um, Lau Libera, in charge of disseminating the teaching of the English language with the future educators. Thank you so much, my friend. Okay, so then let's continue now because as I, as I mentioned, I was worried about this part. from the lecture all right we're now back in our program good evening once again it's our great pleasure uh, to have with us our speaker tonight who is going to the who is going to talk to us on how to overcome adversities professor Christina Mauricio Cerda has been a language teacher for more than 20 years and she is expert in accelerated learning neuroeducation and humanistic principles. She uses her creativity to inspire and train her students to learn. She creates unforgettable learning experiences that will help him, uh, that will help you become a great observer and achieve your goals. Our guest tonight is a writer, a co-author, an international keynote speaker, and developer of editorial projects. She's the founder and director of the Language Academy, known as Pihate Bien. She enhances accelerated learning of her students through digital tools with artificial intelligence, training on pronunciation, soft skills, leadership, and public speaking development. She is affiliated with the International Society of Teachers, Administrators, and Researchers. International Chamber of Language Teachers, Mexican Teachers Association of English as a Second Language, and Instituto Superior de Investigación y Docencia para el Magisterio. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Professor Cristina Mauricio Cerda. Good evening, Professor Cerda. Good evening. Good evening. It's an honor for me to be here, Randy. Mr. Mark, I'm so happy. And I'm so thrilled to participate in this show. Yeah, how's Mexico today? It's morning? Yeah, it's a rainy morning in Mexico. <laughs> it's raining cats and dogs, really. If you can yeah. hear the rain, but it's a beautiful morning. Yeah, it's evening here in the Philippines. So it's uh, good evening to uh, our viewers in the Philippines. And it's good morning to all in Mexico. Buenas uh, buenas Buenos dias. Dias, <laughs> señor and señora. Excellent. To, beautiful, beautiful Spanish. Yeah, I learned to, I, I need to learn my Spanish uh, once again. <laughs> anyway, 
So um, to our professor, uh, Christina Mauricio, thank you for being with us uh, today in our uh, program. So maybe some questions about your uh, profession and about your life. So how, mi- how many years that you have been practicing your profession and how you handle the conflict okay, in uh, your profession also at the same time? Okay, well, I've been a teacher for more than 30 years. Three zero that i'm that old wow. i used to be i used to be a teacher i used to play to be a teacher when i was 13 years old my mother was a secondary teacher or elementary teacher and i used to go in the countryside i took my bus i was very young and i loved teaching english and aerobic classes so since i was very little i had that passion for teaching but when things became serious and I decided to become a formal language teacher, everything went wrong because I was scared. I don't know, Randy, I don't know, Mr. Mark, if you have ever felt that fear that you are not enough, that everybody is pointing at you, that you are criticized, that you are judged, but no one is doing that. It's in your mind, right? So I was feeling very, very, very insecure I had a lot of problems with pronunciation and with language. So I decided to become a teacher, but only for kids and secondary teachers. So most of my professional duties, I've been working with children and with teenagers. Then I, something terrible happened to me. My son had serious problem with his mind, depression and all those things and I started studying about the brain and I was helping my son but at the same time I discovered that my brain is powerful and that I can learn my classes were better when I was teaching in the past people used to tell me that I was very creative that they loved my classes the enthusiasm the passion, the music, the games, all the great things. But the problem was not outside. The problem was here because I didn't feel enough. So when that happened with my son and I discovered my powers and I just started training them, the classes went much better. And I decided to start my academy and I decided to teach to the world. And it has been great. And I am very happy because I discovered a mission for life. I want to teach all the people out there who think that they are not enough, who are struggling with those hurdles, who don't believe that they can achieve great things. I am not done yet, but I can tell them, you know what? It is possible. Keep dreaming, train, uh, work hard, prepare and you can achieve whatever you want wow that's amazing professor um i'd like to ask now a follow-up question for example there are students who are uh, disturbed so how do you motivate them so that they will be engaged and get motivated or they will be engaged in your uh, lesson or in your classroom Okay, Dr. Randy, I learned something very important. Do not, treat pe- do not treat people the way you want to be treated. People are so different. I am different from you, from you, Mr. Mark. Students that are different personality types. The problem was when I wanted to treat all of my students the same way, because they are not the same. Some of them are more shy. Some more of them are more energetic or disturbing. Some of them are going to be more rational or emotional, yeah? So as a teacher, I discovered that I need to pay attention. That's the name of my motto, fíjate bien, pay attention. Because when you find the personality of your students, you can teach them in a better way. You can have compassion because you are going to understand the other person. You are not just looking at yourself. Let me do an exercise with you. What color do you see? It's red. 
Right. What color do you see? It's blue. Blue. Okay. What color do you see? It's pink. <laughs> no, red, red, we can say one, the same one, the same red and blue. Oh, red, so, red, sorry. <laughs> so, red and blue. So, if I okay. ask you, what color do you see, you're going to say red. But if I ask you, what color am I looking at, what color am I looking at? Blue. You can do that. Yeah. Children cannot. It's a, it's a research for Kajet. He was mm -hmm. doing this experiment. And little children, they were saying red because they couldn't see the other part. When I heard about their experiment, I said, oh my goodness, maybe, maybe I'm like that. I am looking at the color blue and I think that my students are blue, but maybe my students are red, green, pink, purple, right? The more that you get to know people, the better you are going to understand them. And with compassion, you can teach them in a very different way. Not the way you think it is. Not blue. <laughs> right? So getting to have that empathy is not easy at the beginning because you have to be very honest to yourself and there are things that you don't like. But later on, you will find lots of benefits. And that's what I love doing. Wow, that's a very incredible, incredible teaching philosophy, uh, Professor Christina. I would like to have to our listeners and to our teachers. I hope you learn from uh, Professor uh, Christina about this uh, teaching philosophy of hers. And Professor um, Christina, what do you think will be the greatest challenge facing student today? Oh my goodness, that's a tough question, Doctor Mark. Really. Sorry. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot um, make a generalization about all the students because as I was telling you, there are so different students, right? There are so wow. different mm -hmm. students' needs. Yes. My recommendation is do not take things personally. Try to understand your students as individuals different kind of people, different kind of personality, different kind of learning styles. They need different things. The question would be, are you ready as a teacher to pay attention, to get to know your students and really to teach them what they need? And now that we have seen so many changes in education, I have discovered that is not my way. I need to address their students' learning styles. I am, going, I am only a guide. So the more prepared, the more aware, the more willing to help them, it's going to be the best for my students because it's not my show. I'm not, I, I am not the star in my class. The students are the stars. So in the moment, and I'm going to show you something great, that I use a mirror and that I use a flashlight to show my students how great they are. And with the flashlight, I show them a light, different paths they can walk through. They are going to be inspired, but not by me. They are going to be inspired by themselves love themselves. I know sometimes it sounds like very romantic, but it's true. We cannot do anything if we don't love ourselves. We really need to love ourselves in order to achieve all the great things. That's my experience. I just struggled for so many years because I, I, I hadn't found that love. And the moment that I found me, everything is much better. So that's what I show my students. I learned a lot from our guest tonight, and I'm I'm just asking one question with uh, our uh, beautiful and energetic guest. Uh, in order to address our uh, our students, uh, the diversity of our students, how do you assess them at the end of your lesson or during your lesson? The moment I start the class, that's why I use that a lot. Fíjate bien, pay attention, open your eyes. Sometimes teachers, we are busy being busy. 
and we are filling reports and we are doing the plannings and the materials and we are very distracted. But we need to, if you if you ask me, and this is not mine, this is Michael, Michael Neal's methodology, show, no, it's be present and show up. You need to be present in your classes. You need to be present in your students. You need to be observing, become a great observer what is going on. Because most of the time we are distracted. Sometimes the students are just there in the class and they are not even paying attention. They are not even learning. So how can you observe them? How can you assess them? And how can you teach them the way they need, not the way you like? Because, for example, the way I like may not be more effective for you, Dr. Randy, or for you, Dr. Mark, or for many others. I learned when I was in the university, in the university, like, do that, do that, that project, that project, like, being busy, 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 busy. I had great teachers and mentors, but it was tough. And the, prob the main problem that I had is that my mindset was not okay. I was very scared. I was afraid. But it was something that I had to work on my own, right? So if we as teachers have that empathy and we have that expertise to get to know our students, to assess them in all the process, be humans. There is a methodology uh, based on talking, get to know them. I think it's going to be great and it's going to work. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias, Professor Cristina Mauricio, for your time and for your wonderful uh, advice to our young professionals, to our students, and of course to us, even as uh, we are professionals already with Doc Randy and I, but still we are learning a lot from your uh, advice and from your strategy because we are also a teacher at the same time. So, Doc Randy, for the interest of time, and I believe that uh, Professor Cristina have uh, another um, engagement. So, uh, Doc Randy? Gracias sa Diyos, Professor Cristina Mauricio Cerda. Thank you. And Thank you so much, sirs. Okay. You are such an inspiration. I really admire what you are doing. I really uh, appreciate and I admire all your work. And let's keep up inspiring more generations because they are the stars. They are going to do great things. And my final message for all of you guys is remember that you are enough. My best tip of advice is get to know yourself. The more you get to know yourself, you are going to do greater things. But not because you are scared or because you are comparing to others. Because we can tend to live in that way, right? Like comparison and, and competition. No. What about if we acknowledge that we are humans, that we are learning, that we can collaborate. And as you are doing with this great event, you are creating such wonderful things. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, that's uh, Professor Cristina Mauricio Cerda from Mexico. Hola. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful Spanish. Yeah. See you guys. <laughs> Dr. Randy, thank you so much. Gracias, Sir Dios. Thank you so much to all our guests, viewers, uh, USAP board members, USAP national and regional executive officers, and to all our USAP family here and abroad. We have already our USAP fam uh, family in Peru, in Mexico, and in other parts of the world. Thank you. Once again, I'm, I'm Randy Max Bulakit. Gives you a piece of advice to think globally, act locally, and lead wisely. I'll repeat. Think globally, act locally, and lead wisely. I'm also... Uh, giving you a piece of advice and always remember this think what is right but do what is just I'm Mark Lataza dito sa Scholar TV Tara, usap tayo Thank you, thank bye you bye, guys.